fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, isn't there something pretty wonderful about the delicate flavor of fresh roasted peanuts? Doesn't it make you hungry just thinking about it? Well, now you can enjoy this all-time flavor favorite in a brand new Betty Crocker cake mix. It's called Peanut Delight, and it really is a delight. It's the first cake mix ever made with butter from fresh roasted peanuts. What's more, into this mix, Betty Crocker has put the same fine ingredients you choose yourself, including famous softer silk cake flour and pure vegetable shortening. But best of all, new Peanut Delight cake mix is made with real peanut butter. That gives the cake its wonderful, delicate flavor of fresh roasted peanuts. Mmm, -hmm. it sounds too good to miss. So try it. It's more fun than a circus and more delicious than you can imagine. Next time Mom goes shopping, ask her to please get the new Betty Crocker cake mix, Peanut Delight. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Hey, Silver. Hooray! The Lone Ranger and Toto rode toward the Kansas town of Bartonville. As they approached the rear of the row of buildings that fronted on the main street, they saw five horses at ground hitch behind the bank. Then five men rushed from the bank's back door. Who? Who? All of the men wore black cloth over their faces, and one carried a bulging sack. Out of a bank robbery. Then shoot. Return the fire. The distance was too great for accurate gunfire, and the bank thieves mounted and spurred their horses toward the west. We'll go after them. Come on, fill the... Startled townsmen who appeared from behind the bank saw seven horsemen heading west, five far ahead of the other two. The Lone Ranger and Toto maintained spaced gunfire as they reduced the lead of the outlaws. Then one of the crooks suddenly clutched his arm. You hit one, Timus, honey. We're getting on them. Oh, 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 more gunfire. The townsmen are firing at us and running this way. Them think we part a gang. Yes. Can you ride as far as the woods? Uh, me ride. Good. So get away from the townsmen, then dress your wounds. Come on, fill it. It was a simple matter to escape from the townsmen and find a place beside a stream in the nearby woods where Tonto's scalp wound could be given the necessary attention. I'll be all right. Since we came here, I saw men pass the woods in pursuit of the crooks and return empty-handed. Apparently, they lost the trail. Maybe we find trail. We'll do our best. To discourage pursuit, the bank robbers traveled over rocky ground, and the Lone Ranger and Tonto, skilled as they were in reading signs, found it difficult to follow the trail. They made poor time, but they kept going until darkness closed in. They were then within sight of the town of Jarvis. We'll keep going, Toto. Not camp for night? Yes, we'll camp nearby. But first, I want to find a doctor and replenish our medical supplies. Come on. Presently, moving slowly along the dark, deserted street, 
The two men drew rein in front of a two-story house on a corner. A lamp-lit sign beside the door said Dr. Doyle, and a white placard in a first-floor window bore the words Dr. In. Easy, city big fellow. Wait here, Toto. Uh -huh. Dismounting, the Lone Ranger peered through the window and saw that the doctor's office was occupied only by an elderly man who sat at a desk. He went inside. Dr. Doyle? Yes, I'm the doctor. Please don't misunderstand my mask. Your I can't... mask doesn't concern me. I'm interested in people's ailments, not the faces. What ails you? Nothing. I'd like to buy bandage, gauze, and antiseptic. I sell a complete kit of supplies for three dollars. That should be just the thing. I'll get you one. Thank you. As Dr. Doyle crossed the office to a shelf, the masked man glanced at the desk and saw a magnifying glass and a small object which the physician evidently had been examining. It was a silver bullet. You'll find this kit is quite complete. Good. And here's the money. Doctor... Isn't that a silver bullet on your desk? Yeah, but, well, I thought it was silver. Did you take it from a man's right arm? Why do you ask? I think it came from the arm of a man who took part in a bank robbery in Bartonville today. What makes you think so? I'm sure it's one I fired at the escaping bandits. You fired a silver bullet? Yes. There's a cartridge from my gun belt. Compare the bullets. This is very really strange. Will you tell me where to find the man from whom you took the bullet? No, it's none of your business. Who, who are you? People call me the Lone Ranger. Yes, I suspected that when you gave me this cartridge. I've heard about you. I'd, I'd like to confide in you, but I... Well, I don't know what to do. I, I must think it over. Very well, Doctor. I'll leave you with your conscience and return if you want me to. Will you? Yes. I'll look for a signal in your window tomorrow night. A signal? Yes. What kind of a signal? I... Oh, I have it. This placard in the window. Doctor in. Yes. If it's upside down in the window, it, it will mean that I'm here alone and want to talk to you. All right, Doctor. Tomorrow evening, if your sign is upside down, I'll be here. After the Lone Ranger left, the doctor sat down at his desk. And a moment later, his adopted son, a pale young man with feverish eyes, came down a stairway and into the office. He carried his right arm in a sling, and in his left hand he held a gun. David, I, I thought you'd gone to bed. No. I've been listening at the head of the stairs while that outlaw was here. You, uh, you called that masked man an outlaw? He is. I told you what happened. I was standing outside the Bartonville bank when those crooks ran out shooting. One of their bullets hit my arm, and I'm sure it was fired by the man who just left here. He claims he's a lone ranger. Uh, he probably gets away with a lot of crimes by showing silver bullets and passing himself off as a lone ranger. David, had would like to believe you. Dad, please don't tell that mass crook about me. I'll bet I know why he's looking for the man he shot. He knows I saw him, and he wants to kill me so I can't identify him as one of the robbers. Very well, David. I'll keep your secret. We'll let the law worry about the bank robbery. I hope I'm doing the right thing. Now, go to bed and rest your arm. The Lone Ranger and Toto camped just inside a woods not far behind Dr. Doyle's home. They saw the lights in the house go out. And a short time later, the moonlight revealed a man riding out of the physician's stables. Toto said, He must have a, him got arm and sling. Yes, his right arm. We let him get a short distance ahead and follow him. All right, we'll saddle the horses. Ah. About an hour later, Dave Doyle was one of five men seated at a table in a cabin in the nearby hills. With him sat the ex-convict, Cash Hanna and Dirk Nasby, and the Gaines brothers, Tom and Larry, who operated a gambling place in town. Though savage dogs stood guard outside, the faces of the men showed fear as Dave told of the Lone Ranger's visit to the doctor's home. When Dave was through, 
Cash Hanna said... Boys, we'll have to get the Lone Ranger or he'll get us. Right, Dirk? That's right, Cash. He and the engine almost caught us in Bartonville. The Lone Ranger's got to die. Yeah, yeah, oh, wait, right. wait a minute, boys. I've got an idea. I know how we can get the Lone Ranger. I don't anchor to shoot it out with him. He'll have no chance to use his guns. Dave, didn't you tell us that Doc would upend his window sign if he wanted the Lone Ranger to call tomorrow evening? Yes, Dad promised he wouldn't do it. Now, listen. Can you figure a way to send the old Doc out of town on a fake call? That'd be easy. I often take messages when he's making house calls, but I... Good, good. Now, late tomorrow afternoon, you send him on a ranch call that'll keep him away for a few hours. After he leaves, we'll all go to the house. We'll put his card in the window upside down. That's it, Cash. The Lone Ranger will see the card and go into the house. We'll be there to shoot him. No, no, we can't do Why that. Why not? What about Tonto? If he's there, we'll shoot him, too. No, I... Now, what's the matter? I don't like the idea. You're yellow. I'm not yellow. I went through with my partner hold up, and I didn't get a cent out of you it. You got plenty out of it. Tom and I tore up your IOUs at our gambling place. That's the only reason I went with you on that bank job. I did it to pay off those gambling debts. Now you want me to get mixed up in a murder. We gotta get rid of the Lone Ranger. Are you gonna help? No. I don't want to get in any deeper. Yellow, oh. here's some more. Stop. Stop. Slap my face. That's just the beginning. Here, give me that arm. Let go. Now, you with us? Or do we break your good arm? Oh, let go. You're going to stick with us? Yes, yes. Oh. Uh, now you're being smart. Doyle, don't you forget our plan. We'll be watching for the doc to leave town tomorrow afternoon. And if anything goes wrong, you get another slug. But this time it won't be silver. And it'll be in your head instead of your arm. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Full back Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's a star because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Toto had followed the man with the injured arm to the hideout in the hills. Hearing the dogs when Dave entered the cabin, they withdrew to a point where they could watch the building from behind brushwood bordering the moonlit trail without arousing the guardian animals. Presently, they heard the distant dogs again. Look, Toto. They saw the cabin door swing open, and a moment later, the man with his arm in a sling was riding toward them. Come on, Toto. Get him off his cow. Right in your cupboard. Hold, hold, hold. Hold that, Father. Get your good arm up. I'm that fast. Don't shoot me. Sit still in the saddle and keep your voice down while I see if you're armed. I'm not armed. Easy, steady, big fellow. All right, dismount. <laughs> what are you going to do to me? That depends on how truthfully you answer my questions. What's your name? I'm David Doyle. The doctor's son? I'm an adopted son. He adopted me when I was a baby. Did he take a silver bullet out of your arm? He, I, well, uh, answer me. Yes, he did. You know who I am? Yes. The Lone Ranger. I heard you talking to Dad. Then you know I'm the man who shot you. I know you're one of the men who robbed the Bartonville Bank. Why, help us. Name the others. Please, mister, I... I already know Cash and Dirk. There were two more. Why? They're the Gaines brothers. They run a gambling place in Jarvis. They're the ones who planned the robbery. They had it all set. They even had a hideout for Cash and Dirk. Is that the place you just left? Yes, I, 
I'll tell you everything. I'm in so deep now. Why did you go to the hideout? I, I went to warn those crooks that you were on their trail. I knew if they were caught, they'd name me. I didn't want that to happen. I thought they might leave here to escape you. But instead, they intend to kill you. Many crooks have tried that. Is the stolen money in the hideout? Yes. But the place is guarded by dogs. They'll warn the crooks if anyone goes near you, be shot on sight. I don't want anyone killed. I didn't want to be a thief. I'm not sharing in the stolen money. Then why did you help rob the bank? The Gaines brothers promised to call off my gambling debts if I helped. It was the only way I could pay them, but now... I wish to heaven I'd never done it. Now I'm in deeper than ever. They'll kill me unless I help them murder you. What can I do? Is there any way out of... Dave, Dave. You better pull yourself together and tell me everything you know. Dave was glad to unload his burden of guilt. He told about the robbery and the way he'd lied to his foster father. Then he revealed the outlaw's plan to murder the Lone Ranger. When he finished, he sighed with relief and said, Now you know everything. Dave, you've been weak, but you might be able to redeem yourself. I'll do anything you say. Would you fight on my side? Yes. Then we'll make some plans of our own. Tell me this. Is your father's stable connected to the house? Yes. There's a door opening into it from the office. That's what I thought. Is there a hayloft in the stable where Tonto and I might hide? Yes. And there's a shed nearby for your horses. Good. We'll go there tonight. What do you want me to do? Return home and go to bed. Tomorrow, do just as you agreed. You mean send my father out of town and then let those crooks into the house? Yes. After that, Todd and I'll handle the situation. Late the following afternoon, Dr. Doyle drove out of town in response to a fraudulent message from a distant ranch. Dave watched his foster father start on the trip, then hurried to the physician's office. In the desk drawer, he found a gun, which he hid in the sling that supported his right arm. Then he turned quickly as the door from the stable swung open. Come on in. Close the door. Are we alone in the house, Dave? Yes. Then we'll prepare for the showdown. At that moment, Cash, Dirk, and the Gaines brothers, watching from the concealment of brushwood beyond the edge of town, saw the doctor driving past. <laughs> there goes the doc on his wild goose case. Yeah, young Doyle's done his part. Now, as soon as it gets dark, we'll go to the house and wait for the Lone Ranger. <laughs> In the doctor's office, the Lone Ranger observed three doors in a side wall. He said, I know that door leads to the stable. Well, what about the others? Uh, this one opens into a small closet. Here's to the second floor behind this one. Toto, you wait in the closet. I'll wait on the stairs. Leave the doors open about an inch. Oh, me slappy. Dave, you better sit at the desk until the crooks arrive. And don't try to double crook. When darkness gathered, Dave lighted a lamp. And a short time later, the front door was opened cautiously. Cash Hanna peered into the office with a gun in his hand. Is the coast clear? Doesn't it look that way? Mm. Come in, boy. Right, okay. Seeing no one in the room but Dave, the crooks relaxed and lowered their heavy guns. Well, this setup looks all right to me. Yeah, let's get that sign in the window so the Lone Ranger walk into the trap. Don't bother. Hey, hey what? Up your gun. He's here. He got you covered. He is. Dave, you double crosser, I'll kill you. I'll get oh, my arm. Anyone oh. else want gun play? Don't shoot my head or up in mine. Hold your fire. My arm's busted. Now you know how hard a silver bullet hits. We'll get you for this double cross, Dave, if it's the last thing we do. Yeah. Where you're going, oh. you'll not get anyone. Stand against that wall, all of you. Otto, pick up their gun. Uh, Meanwhile, Dr. Doyle had returned unexpectedly, and while in the stable heard the shots. As the outlaws sullenly backed against the wall, the physician, holding a heavy gun, rushed through the door. What's going on here? The amazed doctor halted in front of Dirk. Get out of my line of fire! Get back, Dad! I got you! Dirk sprang forward, wrested the gun from the doctor's grasp, then circled his throat with his left arm. Now the doctor's my shield. One move, and I'll break his back with a bullet. 
shoot at me and you kill the doc. Good work, Dick. Now, Lone Ranger, you and the engine, drop your guns. No, do do it. I said drop those guns. While the four crooks watched and waited for the masked man to obey Dirk's order, Dave drew the hidden gun from his sling and fired. <laughs> Dirk staggered back from the doctor, gasped, and fell to the floor. That does it. Dave, you fired that shot. Yes, Cap. I lied to you. The masked man is the Lone Ranger. Stand back, Doctor. I'll cover these crooks while Tonto ties them. Ah, uh, me time. But two of them are wounded. I should attend to them. You better wait until we're sure they're harmless. Oh, well, Dave, it's time to bring in the sheriff. Shall I go for him? Yes. While you're gone, I have a few things to say to your father. All right. I knew something was wrong when I learned that the message from Jeb Pierce was a forgery. How did you learn that? Well, as soon after I left here, I met Jeb on his way to town. Oh, then, of course, I hurried back, and when I heard the shooting... He rushed in and would have spoiled everything if Dave hadn't redeemed himself. Let me tell you about your son. When the sheriff returned with Dave and several deputies to take charge of the bank robbers, he nodded at the doctor and grinned at the masked man, who stood near the open door to the stable. Dave told me about you, mister. Good. That saves explanation. And he took us to the hideout where we picked up the stolen cash. That's why we were so long getting here. I told the sheriff everything, including my part. Dad, I have a lot to confess. The masked man told me everything, Dave. Including your desire to make a new start. Oh, I mean that, Dad. I... When I get out of prison, I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to make you proud of me. That makes me happy, son. After ten years as sheriff, I've seen the way the law works. I got a feeling that Dave's help in capturing these crooks will go a long way towards making his sentence a light one. That's what I thought, Sheriff. Himasabi, horses ready. I thought I was waiting. Well, thank you. Thanks for everything. I'll be expecting big things from you, Dave. I'll not let you down. Nor you, Dad. I'll make good for you and the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd.